So next we're going to talk about paths. So a path, uh, which we're going to uh, typically denote by, uh, by gamma. So a path gamma uh, in the complex plane is going to be a function whose domain is some uh, interval of real numbers. So this is going to be a function uh, gamma taking some interval, say e to b, to the complex numbers. So just to clarify the notation that we're going to use, and we're going to use this throughout. Whenever you write, uh, uh, whenever I write f is a function from a to b, what this means is that f is some function, it's a map or rule or an assignment, and it, what it does is it sends every element in a to some element in b. Okay, and so every value in A has a unique destination in B where it gets sent. That's what makes it a function, that uniqueness. So when I write that gamma maps the interval from A to B to the complex number C, what this tells you is that gamma's inputs are all the values from A to B, and its outputs are complex number C. Okay, and so that's what a path is. It's just a function gamma um, and here, uh, this is just a closed interval in R. Okay, so its inputs are really just real numbers in this interval from A to B. Uh, just to make this a little bit more concrete, for example, we could consider the, the path uh, gamma of T to be, say, T plus uh, 3i T squared, uh, where T goes between, say, 0 and 1. And so what this would do is this would be a path where at t equals zero, you have the point zero plus zero i, so that's the origin in the complex plane. And at t equals one, you would have the point one plus three i. And so that would be uh, something like that. And this happens to look something like that kind of curve there. So that right there is just a path. The starting point is where t equals zero. The ending point is where t equals one. Implicit with these paths is the idea that they have a direction. Uh, in our case, we had a starting point uh, at the origin, and then these kind of move in that upward direction there. Um, I'm gonna draw it, it might be backwards on your screen, but I'm gonna, uh, it moves in that upward direction there. So that's what that path looks like. You could easily imagine that you have that same path. You'd have to parameterize it a little bit differently. Um, you'd have to write it a little bit differently. I mean, and you would have to have possibly a different interval, but if you wanted that same, curve, but it went backwards, you would have to have a different path. So kind of implicit in this definition of a path is the fact that all of these paths have a direction. Okay, and we can think of this, these paths. Okay, so we can think of these paths gamma. I've already said the word, but we can think of gamma uh, as uh, parameterization. So parameterization um, of the curve it determines. Okay, so of the, of the path that gets kind of uh, uh, drawn out. So the, I'm just gonna say with the curve it determines. There's a little bit fuzzy language, but the idea should be clear. Okay, so we can think of gamma, so, so what this really means, and when I say we can think of gamma as a parameterization, first of all, I want you to review parameterizing variables if this concept is not uh, familiar. So this is something that gets talked about typically at the end of a Calc 2 course. Uh, where you have some sort of a curve and then you want to write it in uh, in some parameters. Instead of thinking of y as a function of x, just to go back to uh, functions from reals to reals. Uh, instead of thinking of y as a function of x, you could think of x and y as functions of t, and then uh, they're determined by the single variable t. So it's the same kind of story here. The only difference is that these are complex valued functions, meaning that the outputs are going to be in the complex plane. We can think of gamma as a parameterization in the sense, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna abuse notation slightly and we're gonna, um, we're gonna use the same notation gamma for both the path and for its parameterization, okay? And so uh, that's a slight abuse of notation. Everything should still be completely, uh, completely clear and above board, but that's, that's what a path is. Here's an example. All right, uh, we say that a path is smooth. So a path is called smooth. Uh, if uh, gamma is differentiable, this is differentiable in the sense of uh, Calc 1, 
because it's a function whose inputs are real values. So a path is smooth, uh, a path gamma is smooth if it's differentiable. Uh, and if its derivative is continuous in non-zero. Okay, so that's what it means to be uh, to be smooth. Okay, so that's what it means for a path gamma to be smooth. A path gamma is simple. So a path gamma is simple if uh, the path does not intersect itself. So if the path does not intersect itself, except possibly at endpoints. Okay, so except possibly uh, at its endpoints. So a simple, a simple path would be one like you have some sort of a curve. Um, and so that would be a simple path. So it's some path, it just doesn't intersect itself. We do allow, um, if you wanted to have some sort of a path, we do allow it to intersect itself just at that one point where it starts and stops. Okay, so that's the only place where it's allowed to intersect itself. And of course, if you wanted something not simple, so straightforward to imagine, but you could have something like, uh, you know, something like that where it, it intersects itself other than at the place where it starts and stops. Okay, other than it, at its own points. Okay, so it has these bad spots where it intersects itself. Okay, so simple just means doesn't intersect itself. A path that's closed. <clears throat> so a path that's closed if gamma of A is equal to gamma of B, meaning that it starts and stops at the same point. So uh, these two paths are closed. This path is not closed. Okay, notice that we've used the word closed twice now. We're, we've used it to describe sets. Uh, in, in a closed set is a set containing all of its boundary points. And a closed path is a path that starts and stops at the same point. Okay, and so uh, these are, are slightly different topics you can I mean, they're related in, in a certain sense, but uh, but they really should represent different ideas here. So a path is closed if gamma of A is equal to gamma of B. So that's all that we have to say there. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's talk about one common parameterization, and this will just be one that's very useful for us. Uh, so if we were to have gamma of T is cosine of T, plus I sine of T, where T goes between zero and say two pi. So hopefully you can already imagine what this is gonna be, but at T equals zero, we're gonna have the point one zero, uh, or one plus zero I, I should say. And this is gonna travel in a circle. It's gonna map out the, uh, the unit circle in the clockwise direction. Okay, so it starts and stops at this rightmost point. Okay, and you could imagine that you could also find another parameterization of the circle that goes backwards. Um, so if you were to have sine t plus i cosine t, uh, you know, that could have a different starting point. Or if you were to have, uh, let's see, cosine t minus i sine t, um, you know, you, you could come up with all these different variants. And, and of course, you could find another one where the parameterization goes backwards or starts at the left point and goes counterclockwise, whatever you want. So, but these all parameterize that same circle. This is a way to parameterize the circle. 